50 years ago, Venezuela was one of the world's 20 richest countries. With the 1970s oil boom, the Venezuelan economy was the richest in South America until 1999. Hugo Chavez assumed the Venezuelan presidency, promising a Bolivar revolution aimed at eradicating poverty and inequality. But in 2008, oil prices dropped by nearly 60 percent. Massive government-funded social programs and food subsidies became too expensive. When former bus driver and president by decree Nicolas Maduro took over in 2013, he doubled down on the Chavez platform. Corruption, crime, inflation, and hunger have increased. The so-called Maduro diet has led to a constant search for food, and malnutrition is rampant. The president has said doing without makes you tough. There's people looking for food and they can't find it. There's so, so many things going on over there, violence and robbery. You, can, you cannot be in peace any day. And sometimes, I mean, I, I try not to look at the phone, but I mean, sometimes before the game, two hours prior, I text my family or call them and they don't answer. I'm in the game and I'm thinking, I mean, why did, didn't they answer, you know? I mean, I'm worried. I Sometimes I, I should and sometimes I just go real quick just to see if they just answer my text. And if they answer, okay, I'm good, they, they're, they're fine. 26-year-old Ender Inciarte from Maracaibo and 49-year-old Eddie Perez from Ciudad Ojeda and the Braves. Born a generation apart, they share their common love of their native land and an increasing despair that they see every day 1,300 miles away. Watching the news and see people dying, fighting in the street, uh, I feel bad about that and, and, and I feel guilty not be there, not helping, but hopefully doing this, doing, doing this stuff from here. We, you know, we, we try to send medicine to Venezuela and all that stuff, so um, hopefully that helps. Lending their names and voices to the freedom movement in Venezuela wasn't easy, especially with friends and family still there. How hard is it being visible, well-known, popular players, not only in your home country, but in the United States, to speak out about what you see is going on in your native country. How hard is that? Is there fear, is there fear involved? It's happened before, if somebody says something, they, they really, they call you family and say, hey, tell you son or tell whatever not to talk about it because something's gonna happen to you if, you, if they keep talking. That's, that's what we're afraid, but we're not afraid anymore. I think uh, we'll see the guys fighting in the street for, for the freedom. I think we're not afraid anymore. My family told me, don't be afraid anymore because we're ready to fight. We're ready to um, have a free country and, and now we're here. Now we, they can hear you, our, our boys, uh, thank to you guys. And, and now it's, 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 it's Twitter, it's Instagram, it's everything. You can, uh, and we've been saying a lot for the last couple of weeks and, and now every big league players uh, are talking about and we're not afraid anymore. Recently, Inciarte released an Instagram video, La Vida Baseball, with his fellow major leaguers and Venezuelans to highlight the injustices they see. It's a decision that wasn't easy. That's the least that we can do. I mean, I know Eduardo loves Venezuela. I love Venezuela. It's a country where, where I grew up, and we have so many beautiful things over there, and we just want to be a free country. We just want to have we just want to have tourists like we had before. We just want to be able to spend vacation in Venezuela because there's a lot of good things to do over there. But first thing first, I mean, we, we got to keep uh, showing the way we feel because we're the only voice internationally that, that, we, that they, had, they have. Fast forward a year from now, two years from now, five years from now, where's Venezuela? It's going to take a long time to rebuild Venezuela. And but it's, it's always the start, and I think that's what we're heading for. And, and hopefully five years from now, we can have another interview and, and, and think about it. Because it's, uh, I'm sorry.